Hey guys, Tennessee Frank here, uh, and as you see, I got my Linux hat on, so we're going to look at a, a another distro here, and uh, this has become my new daily driver. Uh, as you know, if you watch my channel, I've been running Debian and Debian-based stuff uh, quite a bit. Uh, was doing Debian 10.6, and then I moved to MX Linux when they got the KDE desktop, uh, and uh, you know, KDE desktops is, is kind of my go-to. Uh, it's my sweet spot, if you will, with desktop environments. Um, I like the way I can configure it. I like the way it looks. It's just, it's a good environment. I, I like it. But uh, you can get different base systems. If you watch my other video, uh, you know, uh, about d different books, same look. I mean, it's like this, the same cover on a different book. Uh, this is going to be a, a whole different a whole different system as far as repositories uh, since it's open SUSE it's going to be uh, RPM packages instead of uh, .deb files uh, it's also going to use a whole different uh, language instead of apt for your package manager language you're using something called zipper Z-Y-P-P-E-R uh, so you're, you're going to have a, a little bit different way of doing things but more or less it's the same uh, you want to install something instead of sudo apt install, it would be sudo zipper install, or they do have aliases, so you can do sudo zipper in, in and then put your package name. So it's still it's similar. Um, for, for updating your uh, system, sudo zipper update or sudo zipper up will update it. Uh, if you want to go ahead and do your, like, a distribution upgrade, like I used to do a, a DIST-upgrade, you can do sudo zipper dup dupe, which is distribution upgrade, and it'll upgrade everything, you know, all your packages. So, yeah, same, same general practice, but a little different language. And uh, I wanted to kind of use something different and get familiar with it. Um... We can look around. This is the wallpaper you get out of the box. Kind of boring. So, like with all KDE uh, desktops, you can go in and all you got to do is just like uh, click the Get New Wallpaper button. I've downloaded several others here that uh, I think look a little more interesting. I mean, there's this guy here. I think this looks kind of cool. Um, I did find this one. I think that's kind of neat you know it's kind of a space feel kind of looks pretty um, this does come with Yakuik out of the box if I remember correctly so you do have your drop-down terminal which is nice I like that um, or it might have been another distro that had it I don't quite remember maybe it was a Manjaro distro that I looked at um, but it, it was in the repository so it was easy enough to install um, pretty much uh, all the, the usual suspects that I put in my systems here. Audacity was there. Clementine was there. Of course, uh, HTOP, hard info is there, so you can get system data. Uh, Caden Live is there. It's actually a newer version than I'm used to. Um, you do have a few other things, a simple screen recorder. Um, I didn't do... Um, my scan program, um, Simple Scan, because Scan Light is in here. I wanted to give it a try. Um, installed Shotwell, that's in there. VLC, I put it in there. Webcamoid was there. So uh, you, you do have a few different uh, packages you get that are, you know, Debian has them, and they're the RPM packs now from the OpenSUSE package management. So I can get them and run them here too. I'm um, going to grab a little quick drink here. Throat gets a little dry talking so much. But, uh, yeah, you still got all the packages you need. It's just instead of a .deb, it's a, an RPM. And uh, we can see system info. It's going to be OpenSUSE Leap 15.2. Uh, it does have the KDE environment. Um, Plasma version is... 5.18.5 um, of course there is a newer version out they got 5.20 out now 
which uh, supposedly has some uh, pretty cool changes. And I'd be willing to bet if you went on uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is their rolling distro, it would probably have the newer packages. Um, but you can see kernel version 5.3, not too bad. Uh, Debian was running your 4.19s. So this is a little bit newer kernel. Of course, it is 64-bit. Here we can see uh, the processor I'm running and RAM and all. You know, just your basic system info. But uh, the only issue that I ran into, I installed VLC and uh, was going to do some videos. And it wouldn't play. It didn't have the right codecs involved. So I just went on uh, the interwebs and did a search, you know, OpenSUSE H264 codec install. And I came to this unofficial guide. It's right here. And uh, you can scroll down. There isn't a, a one-click install. I didn't use that. I went ahead and just scrolled on down and uh, dropped terminal. Went ahead and did SU, so I'd be root, so I didn't have to type sudo in after everything. And then you just basically copy and paste each command one at a time. Let everything install. And that will go ahead and it gets all your codecs installed. So now VLC works flawlessly. Um, not having any issues at all with it. Uh, it's working perfect. That was the only little issue as far as recording videos. I've not had any issues with uh, any screen tearing or anything like I had in MX. Um, that was part of the reason I, I moved from MX was getting screen tearing issues. But this has been perfect out of the box. One really cool thing uh, about OpenSUSE is uh, SUSE Enterprise Linux kind of backs it. So it does have a large, uh, a large organization behind it that has a, a, you know, a lot of capital to throw at this project. Um, kind of like uh, Canonical with Ubuntu, you got a larger organization there. Or uh, if you're running Fedora, you know, that's backed by Red Hat. You know, you got uh, RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So whenever you get a distro like this that has a large organization behind it, it generally will have a lot of software available. Um, it's going to be fairly rock solid. It's going to work um, because they want their distros to work. They do a lot of, of testing for their enterprise stuff over on these desktop setups. So uh, that's like with Fedora. That's actually Red Hat's testing bed. Whenever they want to put something new on the market, they'll put it on Fedora. All of us desktop guys will test it, find any bugs, send in reports, and then they can fix it before they roll it out to their corporate clients. And uh, that's kind of the same thing here with OpenSUSE. This is kind of a test bed for them. So it's a uh, you know, good way for them to, to get feedback on things they want to roll out to the corporate clients and make sure they're rock solid stable before the corporate clients get it because they're actually paying for support. When you pay, you want something to work. Um, so uh, that, that's a you know, nice feature they have. Um, they do have something that they call YAST, which will open. Let me go ahead and do my super secret password. And uh, YAST is uh, yet another software tool. And uh, you can see here, there are a lot, a lot of little things you can do. You can do media check. You know, if you want to check media like an ISO file. There's online updates, there's uh, software repositories you can configure and choose from. Hardware information, if you want to find out about your hardware. Um, I still need to set my printers up, so right here I can configure my printer from here. There's just a lot, a lot of cool tools here. In the same way MX Linux had the MX tools that help you out, there's a lot of tools here, so if you're a new user, not sure what to do, not sure if there's terminal commands you can do or what, you can go right in here and pretty much find everything that you need in one spot. You got firewalls here, apt armor, um, security center, you know you can configure security settings and, and harden your installation, which is something a lot of the corporate clients, you know, they need that. 
They don't want uh, hackers getting in there messing with the, their, their uh, systems. You can install these hypervisor tools, which uh, I'll be using KVM. I've already installed some of them. And then uh, you can create a virtual machine from here. You don't need to install GNOME boxes or uh, virtual box. This gives you the ability to make a virtual machine right here. Again, that's something a lot of the corporate clients like to do. They like to roll out virtual machines for their servers, and they don't want to have to uh, rely on a, a, a third party like VirtualBox to do that. So you have that right here. A lot of other stuff, release notes, support, it's all right here. I mean, it, it makes it real handy. It's in one spot, so you can pull open YAST, and do all of your uh, do all your your necessary tweaks and and stuff to your system, um, so that's that's kind of a cool thing. A lot of people kind of hack on it. I like it. I like the idea of having it all right there. So uh, just wanted to do a real quick look. You know, let you see what I'm running now. I have moved away from the Debian based, moved over to OpenSUSE, and uh, I'm going to give it a try for a while. So far. Knock on wood, it's been rock solid. It's not giving me any issues except for the codecs. Once I got them installed, it's been fine. Everything's been working great. So, uh, yeah, yet another, uh, another distro, another flavor of Linux, if you will. And uh, that's the beauty of Linux. Try one, you don't like it, give another one a try. Keep going till you find your sweet spot. Like I said, KDE desktop, that's my sweet spot. I like that desktop. I'm going to give OpenSUSE a try as uh, kind of the back end, see how it works. If it don't work out, I can always go back to Debian. That's not an issue. Um, but like I always say, either we stand up for our rights or we can sit by and watch them go away. You all have an awesome rest of the day. We'll talk to you later. Tennessee Frank out of here.